Hi, I'm Ruben Stutter, and you're watching BMA backstage at the Dakota. And it's the flying without wings, cause you're my special thing. I'm flying without wings. Well, you know, I started singing when I was three, and I've been in countless groups. Uh, my first singing group was called The Fellas. <laughs> when I was uh, 11, and then in high school I was in a group called Eternal Harmony, and then from that in a gospel group called God's Gift, and then what I really think shaped me as a professional singer was the jazz band, uh, jazz slash cover band I was in called Just A Few Cats. We um, performed all over the Southeast and um, made a pretty good living doing it, and so that was, you know, like maybe a year or two prior to the show, and it really helped me you know, sharpen my skills as a performer and also like broaden my, um, my musical vocabulary. This broken man, yeah, how can I lose The tour is going great. Um, this is our first um, shed. This is the first place we've been and stayed for a couple days to really watch the show evolve and grow. Um, he's a lot of fun. You know, that's what I really like about him. I like people that make me laugh and uh, are interesting and smart and funny. Yeah. And he has such a great way of bridging that kind of old crooner with this new sort of singer that exists now. I think he's a great bridge between the two. You know what, I, um, I enjoy entertaining. I'm very silly and you know, it's funny, you know, cause my brother is about five years older than me. So we didn't have a lot of, <laughs> you know, our interests were very different. So I spent a lot of time with myself as a kid. So I had to entertain me. And I think that comes out a lot when I get an opportunity to do that. Talking on the line, that's how it was. Taking walks together through any kind of web, just because there's a special way of looking at your life when you know someone. I really advocate for kids to have music and art, and I think it is as important, if not more important, than English and arithmetic and science and all that. I do, um, I, I do think it's really important for children to have a creative outlet. 
I do think, particularly now, it's so easy for them to be sedentary, mm -hmm. to be in the house or on their phones or on their Xbox. Um, and I think there's room for all that. But when I was growing up, kids took music lessons. Um, a lot of us were probably better in math than we might have been. Our cognitive skills were improved, our reading and language skills were improved, our social skills were improved, mm -hmm. playing with other kids. So I think it's really important for children to experience that. And it's fun. There's the fun of it, you know. The, the sad truth is that, you know, um, the funding for the arts in our public schools has been drastically um, reduced. And if we don't take a stand to uh, enrich our young people in the arts, they will miss out on such a important part of their intellectual growth. And um, it, it has been my experience that, you know, especially with, you know, working with these young people that we work with every summer with my music camps, and we introduce them to different forms of music, it has been my experience that children um, open up to so many different experiences. Like I have kids from rural parts of Alabama that come to my camp and you know they've never uh, performed or sang a classical piece before and they go on and come to my camps for four years and they go on and be music majors and are now you know winning competitions singing opera music you know from children that have never heard this music before to going on and winning competitions it means that you know there's a, a, a lack thereof or something that's missing in our school systems whereas children of the 70s and 80s, 60s, 70s, however long ago, we all, you know, benefited from such a broad scope of artistic expression that they sometimes even made us be a part of. So um, these children have to want it these days. And so I, I do my best to put it in front of them. And I, you know, work hard and tirelessly with my mother over the year to make sure that we are able to give the young people in, you know, my community the 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 funds of what they need to do. Oh, I don't think of genres in terms of music and creation. Mm -hmm. I just, um, for me, it's all kind of pages in a, one big book. So I don't have the need to compartmentalize it like people do. And particularly as a musician, as a music educator, as a student of music, I just really see it all coming from the same source. <laughs> I just want them to feel great when they leave. However they are feeling, I'd like to really speak to that. I need, a lot of people say, well, what, what can we expect? And I say, well, don't expect anything. Mm -hmm. Just come and be transported and be comforted and, and be nestled in whatever it is you need right then if you need to cry or if you need to laugh or whatever that escape is that you need, we are here to provide that for you. I would place at your feet all that I own. You've been so good to me. 
to have a good time that's it uh, you know there is no like you know mystical magical inspiration that I try to you know make leave people with people come to a concert to uh, to lose the day and to have a good time and a lot of times artists forget that we get in here and we want to you know perform all of our newest and greatest and you know most musical and you know, um, profound songs and, 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 and people just want to sing along with you and have a good time. So I try to do that for people. I try to give people an experience that they'll remember and they'll want to come back more and more. Hey, this is Layla and you're watching BMA Networks. <laughs>